get out of the rat race and think outside the box. It gave me enough time to be able to figure out, Malcolm, you can't go, you cannot go back to 38th and North Avenue during Memorial on Rest in Peace t-shirts. How am I going to be in Australia and, and, and go back to that? But you got to have faith. We're talking about jumping off that cliff again. You got to be able to have faith with inside yourself and with inside your journey and stay focused in on your why. Go ahead, boo. I closed that business down. I came back home, got some business and everything in order, and I shut the company down. One of the things that um, I realized that doing a memorial and having a company, the Showtime Wild Image and doing a memorial at Sharks is, the business started to grow so much that I started to need help. And I started going to the university looking for graphic designers and other airbrush artists. But what started to happen is since we were located in the hood, we was located around all these kids. So our hub, our building became a hub for all of these young people. And I remember, you know, it took me back to my dad inside the Boys and Girls Club. And what we started to do is we started having parents, mothers, call us. My son is into art. He don't know what to do. Y'all, can are y'all hiring? <laughs> so we had literally a team. My little sister, she would, she was the manager. <laughs> we had a good team of like 15 young people from the ages of 10 all the way up to 17 years old that we taught screen printing, we taught graphic design. We taught, you know, airbrushing, business. Um, my graphic designer was 15 years old, you know what I mean? And so I, I, it's, it was, it, like you're saying, you got to look at it from different angles. So what that did is on one perspective, with dealing with the memorial and the death thing was very harmful, you know, for my soul. And it was kind of chaotic in, in, for our family as well. But what it also did is it gave us a platform. First of all, it gave us money. You know, because if, if, if we didn't have the money of the memorial, we couldn't pay these young kids, these, pe these kids. And we was every day competing with drug dealers and pimps. So I'm, I'm dealing with my young people, even to this day. I got a group of probably 10 young people who's supposed to be here. You know what I mean? Who couldn't get here late, who wasn't here on time, this and that. And one of the things that I realize is, is that, you know, you have to look at it from different angles. You got to be able to, and that's what I had to learn when I went to Australia. It gave me that time to be like, okay, Malcolm, so how about you just take out one component? What don't you want to do and what do you want to do? And find what are you good at? And I realized that I, be, I, can't, I was great at communicating with young people. I can get them at 12 years old. I can get them at 10 years old. And it, the roughest ones is the ones who I can reach. <laughs> so... Thank you for saying that. You are totally right. You know what I mean? It's always so many different angles to be able to look at that. And so um, Del Zeno, the name of it, the name of his, his uh, organization or his website is Black Business Network. And then he has an organization also called the Tag Team, Market, Tag Team Marketing. And this is a great mentor of mine and, a, and one of my coaches. Um, it's always, it's so important for us to be able to make sure we align ourselves up with great people. Go ahead. All right, I want to let you guys know that we have another boot camp coming up. We call it this the Art of Success Book Camp. It's going to be January 27th through the 28th. And I've been getting so many different messages from people that want to learn how to write their book. So this is going to be built around full Two-day training, we're going to be showing you how to be able to go chapter to chapter, the most effective way to be able to write your book, how to be able to market yourself, because a lot of people also want to be speakers, you know, how to be able to uh, create your speaking uh, platform, do your presentations, different things like that, so you can be able to make some money. I know so many people who have self-published their books, and they got a basement full of books. We're going to show you how to not only design, create, and, 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 and format your book. But before we start doing that, we're going to show you how to make money. We're going to show you how to do your pre-sales so your pre-sales take care of the cost of your book getting published. So if you guys uh, definitely, I hope you guys will be able to join us. We're going to have some, um, you guys can be able to sign up too at the end of this conference and so on. Let's go to page nine real quick. 
Go ahead, bro. Let's keep going. So one of the things, too, guys, that I wanted to let you guys know is I do I offer an apprentice uh, program. Um, it's pretty much like a coaching program. And one of the things that I do is you guys, if you guys decide to come next year, you become an alumni. So we do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I show you how to be able to whatever your products, whatever your vision, whatever your, your, um, your message is, how to be able to package that, and then how to be able to travel the country and do speaking engagements and so on. So a lot of my... Um, a large part of my income comes from speaking. And what I do is I create my books and my products behind my speaking business. So I want to teach, um, just like I've been able to have great mentors that, that taught me how to be able to, you know, it's one thing to be a public speaker and a paid speaker, <laughs> you know. Public speaking going, you know, like when I was first started off, they, I ain't getting no money. I think I got a chicken plate, a plate of chicken or something. I was at the church. They asked me to come speak. I was just happy to get a little chicken wing. So, but um, you got to start off somewhere. But, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, speaking is, goes hand in hand with being an author. You know, and if you know how to be able to package it right, and that's one of the things. A lot of people have books, but like we was talking about, they don't know how to package it and position themselves. So... No, I focus like the, the arts and education, it was a niche market of mine that I found. Nobody else was dealing with urban kids and art. So I started writing a lot of my literature, a lot of my, my, my brochures. I write built around certain keywords that I know that the National Arts and Education Conference, who sponsors billions of dollars through the National Endowment of the Arts, you know, that's my little niche market that I found. So in each market that we all have, each market or brand business that we all want to get into, it's always a little niche market. So that's one of the things that I've been honored to be able to do is find niche markets. So that's one of the things that we help you with. Let me go to the next one if you could. All right, so we're doing a survey. Papers, uh, you can go ahead and you can get another book over there or you can use his book if he's not using it. All right, so we're doing a survey, and then uh, go ahead and go to the next one. So, you know, when you get a chance, there's some information in here, you know, basic information about why most people don't succeed, and I'm talking about your attitude and talking about, you know what I'm saying, how you got to think a little bit different. So we're starting off on, pa on page nine. John, you're going to be my reader. Actually, if you don't mind, yeah, that's perfect. You can stand right there. So come on, stand up, John, for me. So go ahead and read off passion. Uh, a strong or, extra, or, extra, or extravagant. The, the word is fineness. F-O-N-D-N-E-S-S. -S. So fineness, I want you to write that right here. So one of the ways that, yes, yeah, a pen. Is it one in your book? Hmm? Yeah, you can write it in there if it's one in your book. So one of the ways that, you know, we're going to reprogram the subconscious is we got to hear it and we got to write it. This is going to be your tool that you're going to take home with. It's going to have all your notes and everything in one area. So if you see something, you can mark on it. You can circle it. Keep on, John. Desire for anything. D-E-S-I-R-E. -E. We're going to go over into, if I'm moving too fast, let me know. We're going to go to page 10. First word is passion. John, continue on. Uh, what is passion? Nope, we're on page 10. So when we find our, the first one is passion perks, the inner spirit, and we find our passion, we find the reason we were put on this earth. Passion is what is that thing, I get a lot of, you know, a lot of clients, a lot of coaching members from me asking me, Malcolm, how do I find my passion? What do you want to do? What can you do effortlessly every day whether you will be getting paid or not? Go ahead, John. How do you know when you found your 
compassion. Go ahead, John. It doesn't feel like work. Go ahead, John. This exercise will help you to on, will help you to your own, your passion. Mm -hmm. Throughout this book, we will use tools like this to help your, help you construct your your roadmap to success. So this whole book is your roadmap. This is gonna be we're gonna be talking about goals, visions, passion. And this is a tool. So let's go ahead and go to, uh, we on 12, page 12 now. So I want you to go ahead and sign that, date that, and write out 10 things that you're passionate about. Number them from one to 10, most to least important, with one being the first important. It is very critical that you be specific as possible. Make a commitment to use this as a tool to push your progress ahead. It's so important that we spend some time to really figure out what we are passionate about. A lot of times we think that we want to do something and we might enjoy doing it, but we might not be passionate about it. So it's some times that we need to do, uh, some, 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 some uh, time that we need to just sit down and just write down what we're passionate about. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Write down as uh, three, four, whatever you can do. You are very passionate about one thing. You don't need the other nine. Exactly. But make sure that they all interlign in a perfect circle. So meaning like not just saying I want to make a million dollars. I'm passionate about making money. But you're saying, oh, I'm passionate about making money. I'm passionate about making sure that my son goes to college. I'm passionate about, you know, changing lives on this perspective. Because those passionate things are those um, tools that you use when you're having doubt, when you get frustrated, when you, you know what I'm saying, got a, a new business partner or a homeboy or a homegirl and they're telling you you should be doing this instead of doing what you want to do. And that's why it's so easy for us to just, these are simple things, they seem very simple, but this is so powerful. This is what I definitely had to go through when I shut down a $110,000 business. While y'all writing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of read something to you guys. I used to. As I travel all over the world coaching creative people, the number one thing that I hear is, I used to do. It was always the same sentence. I used to draw. I used to paint. I used to sing. Most times, right after the statement, I used to, people talk about what happened in their lives that stopped them from following their dreams or passion. What I realize is that the person who is telling me this, this about what they used to do really wants to pursue their dream. Most times the excuse, this is so important, most times the excuse or reason why they stopped doing their quest should have been the number one reason why they should have stayed on their quest. So people say, oh, I can't start my business because I'm waiting for my child or I just had a baby or I got kids or I got, you know, school, school supplies coming up. And instead of looking at it from that perspective, you got to look at it and say, this is the reason why I need to be able to focus in on my dream because of my child. How you got to kind of flip it. You got to use the word I used to out of your vocabulary because it's, it's an, it becomes an excuse. And a lot of times when I hear people say, I used to sing, I used to 